welcome to today's video. I'm so excited for a video like this. I'm basically just showing you three separate recipes that to me just scream fall and October and they're just so comfy and cozy and warm you up and are kind of very nostalgic for the season. The first one that I'm going to show you is a creme brulee coffee. I made this yesterday and recorded it and I had another one today. It is so delicious. Personally, I think it's better than what you get at Starbucks. It is just so, so good. It has coffee and caramel and um, brown sugar and it's just, it is so good for a little afternoon pick-me-up. The thing that I'm going to show you second are these apple kind of, I don't know, apple bites, if that's what you want to call them. You kind of slice apples up, cinnamon, in sugar, wrap them and bake them in crescent rolls. It's the perfect apples it's apple season right perfect and recipe for this and the last recipe we'll see how it goes i didn't make it yet it is a pioneer woman recipe for lasagna soup and i love lasagna personally my husband is kind of like he'll eat it but doesn't really love it um but he's not a big soup fan either but i'm hoping fingers crossed to get him in the kitchen and actually help me make it with you guys so um sit back relax if you try any of these let me know what your favorite is in the comments. Share your pictures with me. Tag me if you post pictures of them on Instagram or anything like that. I would love to see them. If you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up button. It does a lot for me more than what you realize. And if you're not subscribed yet, join the family. Okay, guys. Okay, y'all. So this first coffee drink I am so excited to make. I'm just going to run through the ingredients with you super quick. Obviously, we need a cup for that. And I'm just going to brew some regular non-flavored coffee in my um, Keurig right over there. And then in a saucepan, I'm going to slowly heat up for one serving about a half of a cup of milk. Uh, two tablespoons of caramel sauce, caramel, caramel, whatever sauce. Um, Smucker's has a salted caramel one that I think would be delicious, but we had this here, so I figured I'm just going to use that, but I am going to add a pinch of salt to it. And then while it's simmering, I'm also going to add just about a teaspoon of brown sugar in there. So I'm going to kind of get that simmering, brew my coffee, and then I'll show you what we do with this goodness at the end. Y'all, I cannot stress enough how delicious this was. And you'll see here in a bit how great I thought it was. Uh, for this recipe, I did about a half a cup of milk here. Getting a spoon, getting my caramel ready, I think. Oh no, about, if you, I, that was about a half of a tablespoon of brown sugar. And my tablespoon is too big to fit in the jar, no. Um, but I ended up putting, I don't know, probably about two teaspoon I don't know it ended up probably being about a tablespoon in there and all I did was heat that up together and I did add a pinch of salt to just kind of you know salted caramels all the way. All right guys so I have my freshly brewed cup of coffee right here you can see that easy peasy now all we're gonna do is take that delicious brewed milky sweet milky mixture just kind of top that with that. Perfect. Oh, I'm so excited for this. And then I am going to add some of this maple vanilla whipped cream that I have found at Aldi. If you can't find this, no problem. Just use regular whipped cream or you don't even have to use whipped cream if you don't want to. Like I seized. But Oh, bless me. And then, because I'm a Gilda Lily kind of person, I'm going to take just a little bit more of this syrup here and just kind of, oh, yes, ma'am, that's what we're doing. I'm excited for this. Probably should have heated that up a little bit, but, you know, that's okay. I'm good with this. Different spoon, by the way. I know some people are always like, oh, my God, you use the same utensil as yours. So gross. Different spoon. And then this is just some cinnamon sugar that we have. Just going to dust the top. Oh, guys, look at that. It smells like fall. I'm so excited to taste this. Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be so hot. I'm going to burn my face first. I'm going to, oops, see, I knew that was going to happen. Let me um do some damage control here first. Maybe don't fill it up as high as I did. No, oh, poops. It, guys, it is so hot. I'm going to burn my face. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, guys. 
I'm sorry, I'm slurping. <laughs> but this is like, this is something I 100%, I don't, I can't stop drinking it. It is so, it tastes like Starbucks. I think it's better than Starbucks. Um, I found this recipe on Pinterest though. <laughs> um, and I obviously told you how to make it. It is so good. I would get my husband to taste it, but he hates coffee. So he would hate it. But like as someone who gets lattes on the regular, this is definitely just so good. It tastes like cream, creme, creme brulee. Like if you ever had the Starbucks creme brulee lattes or anything like that, it's exactly what this tastes like. It is so good. Perfect for this time of year. So that's what I'm going to do now. It's after 5 p.m. I'm going to go drink this. I'm in the middle of watching The Craft because it's like spooky season. I'm going to drink this, cuddle under a blanket, and enjoy the rest of my evening. All right. So this recipe, I don't know. I'm going to say like maybe six people tried this and we all loved it so much. The longest, hardest part was honestly peeling the apples. This recipe to me was so good because... Well, to start off with, I'm not a big apple dessert fan, but I'm also not like a super sweet fan. But whenever I did this, and you'll see, there's not too much added sugar or anything like that. I don't like apple pies when they're super, you know, like goopy and all that kind of stuff. And this was just like perfect. And I actually ended up, I made this as a dessert, but we ended up serving it with breakfast just because it was not terribly sweet but kind of more like a pastry kind of thing and it was perfect for something like that so you can see I just took some huge honey crisp apples obviously you can use what kind of apple whatever kind of apples you want and I just sliced them into slices all the while sneaking a bite here and there <laughs> and then once I kind of got that all set and out of the way I just sprayed my baking sheet just to make sure nothing stuck to it and this recipe called for fresh orange juice and orange zest. I did not have any, so you can see there, I used a little bit of orange juice just in the bottom and it turned out perfectly. So I would just recommend doing that. And then you can see, I don't, I always feel weird doing these. You can very much see what I'm doing. You just simply take, I don't know, four to five slices per crescent roll and you literally just roll, roll, roll. Stick them in there, roll them up. And this is where a lot of people would put maybe like cinnamon and sugar on their apples. This is where I didn't and why I think it probably turned out better. And it's just, you know, if you want it sweeter, go ahead and toss your apples before you roll them up in some cinnamon sugar, but you definitely do not have to. Okay, so then I got them all in the pan. I simply took some melted butter and just covered the top of them. That's what's gonna be kind of the glue that holds on your brown sugar, cinnamon, and sugar. And don't be afraid of adding a lot of butter, guys, okay? <laughs> and then I just took another bowl, dumped in some brown sugar, and some regular sugar, and some cinnamon. And this is where you would put some orange zest from that orange I was telling you about earlier, and that would be delicious as well. And don't be stingy with this either. Make sure you get it all over. So uh, when it bakes, it's gonna get that nice golden, crunchy kind of deliciousness on top. All right, so really quick, we're gonna be making a, what are we making? 
Oh, something like weird. Lasagna stew soup. Soup? Lasagna soup? We're like, it's not really a soup because it's going to be like thicker. So it's yeah. more like a stew. It's from the oh. Pioneer Woman. Super excited. You're going to love it. Okay. So I'm going to run through the ingredients super duper quick. Pork sausage. Ground beef. We're using extra ground beef because he likes things meaty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> tomato paste. Uh, crushed diced whatever tomatoes I accidentally, David, bought crushed tomatoes with green chilies, which would have been a disaster, but we had a backup can downstairs. Onion, garlic, lasagna noodles, obviously. Some wine to deglaze the pan and to possibly drink after. You can drink it. Okay. Did you, like, did you blame me for buying the crushed and diced chili one? No! That's what it sounded like. I, I'm the one that definitely 100% bought them, and I was okay. just saying it was going to be a disaster. I just wanted YouTube to know this. Okay. Because okay. the way you said it, it's not like I mistaken. No, no, no. Um, the recipe calls for chicken stock, but how I roll, we just do the bouillon. Um, oregano, thyme, salt and pepper, obviously. Some fresh parsley and basil to make these little ricotta balls, dumpling kind of things that goes on top. And you obviously mix in parm with it, too. You, sir! Yeah. Can you get the little thing of cream in the top of the refrigerator there? Mm -hmm. And some cream. Half and half, whatever. And then, do you want to be on meat duty? Yep. Do you want to start cooking the meat? Pot of water on to boil, and we're ready to rock and roll, right? Sure. Okay. Um, and the water on to boil, sir. Okay, here we go. Rocking and rolling. The man cooking the ground beef and the pork sausage. The recipe calls for breakfast sausage. But where I went shopping, there was no breakfast sausage, so we just got regular pork sausage, which I'm sure Why could you. Breakfast sausage? I don't know. I think they just wanted something sweet. I don't know. But like, if you make anything Italian with beef and sausage, it's like pretty good, right? Beef and sausage just really good. See, see, David, we're down with recipe from the start, but we're already mm -hmm. off to like. I'm, just, I'm not a huge fan of lasagna. This is gonna be better. If I'm in the end, I don't like soup. Andy doesn't like soup, but it's I just, do. Soup is just not, it's not a meal, it's a appetizer. Is it though? Okay, so for this one's sake, I'm only adding a half of an onion because I'm sure you're shocked he doesn't like onions, which I've probably said before, but. Um, so I'm just gonna give this a nice little dice, add it to the meat that he is cooking. Guys, this recipe is like fairly simple. You kind of just pretty much throw everything into one pot and are on your way. So I'm gonna dice these very small, okay? Sure. Okay. Um, should I use this thing? Sure. Our new spatula. Oh my gosh, it's like it's meant to be. It's a new Pioneer Woman spatula that I'm obsessed with. And it's a Pioneer Woman recipe. David Ross, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, that's you love me? I do love you. Oh. Going to add the onion to the meat. See, not too much. So much onion. Not that much onion. And then, you obviously need to add a ton of garlic to this. And you know what I'm obviously going to use to do it. <laughs> How many cloves are we thinking? Seven. Four? Seven? <laughs> you know, all my garlic prior to this was pouring in garlic powder. Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with garlic powder. But it's not fresh. And Rachel Ray doesn't have a thing that you can buy for it. Yeah. I mean, okay, here's what I've learned as someone who loves to cook, right? The cream. Hold this. My eyeballs are burning from this onion, y'all. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Like, you can buy the cream and garlic, which is fine. But, uh, it's not as, like, fresh and good as, like, the, f the fresh kind. Which, the did you hear what I just said? That sounded really good. Anyway. Wow, my eyes are on fire. And then I'm alone. I know what happened. No, just kidding. What? I, I mean, I don't need to be sitting there constantly serving this, right? No. You want to kind of let it caramelize? That's what I thought. Do you want to open these? Cans. Like we're going with. That's it? That's it? That's like five cloves of garlic. That's a lot. I feel, I don't, I mean, I like 
garlic, but I don't know. I feel like if I put in too much garlic, you'll be like, oh my god. Again, okay, I told you before, garlic's like one of those things that like, I, you both know I love garlic. I mean, I do too. I'm not... I just don't, I have no concept of what's a lot or a little. But that's the thing though, like, okay, I love garlic, you love garlic, but once you add it, it's not like you can fix it or take it out. Right. So I'd rather, you know, still have you love me by the time this is over and still be kiss me. I'm not a vampire. <laughs> Are you? Clearly so, not. I mean, you never know these days. Clearly not. <laughs> I like how you're like, obviously I'm not. I'm so tan. Because you're so tan. That's it. Um, uh, do you want to open the bottle of wine? We should use a knife to cut the seal. <laughs> See, I feel like this is a decent amount of garlic, right? Sure. Okay. see how I'm struggling with this seal. Yeah. <laughs> I literally like go like this. Can I show you what I do? I literally like and then I kind of like Oh, see that? Well, when you drink ounces and ounces and glasses and bottles of wine. Which I don't. fresh parsley some real like this is going to go in the actual soup but it's also going to go into the ricotta balls and then the basil is just going to go into the ricotta balls so i'm going to do chop this chop chop this chop up no one, no one. remove the plastic first. Don't want to melt it. Our basil is looking not great, but we're going to go ahead and <laughs> do it anyway. Okay. And then... Smell that though. That smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you smell it? It smells like a lot of basil. It smells like delicious. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. How you doing? How you feeling about this situation? I'm doing. See? Yeah, there's a lot of... Not okay. I'm gonna start the ricotta mixture. Sorry, it was an accident. It's a small kitchen, man. This is how we keep it fun. Um, you want to add salt, pepper, a little bit of that thyme, and mm. oregano to the meat. Okay, so some ricotta going in the bowl. Perfect. Um, we'll use some salt and pepper in here. Salt and pepper into the ricotta. Some parsley and your basil. And then a bunch of Parmesan cheese in here too. I don't know how much. I don't know, I'm literally, that's why. I could never actually have a cooking show because I'm like, just throw some in. So I would say I have about, I don't know, here's, I'll leave the actual pioneer recipe in the um, description for you guys. Um, I'm gonna say I have about a cup of ricotta here, 
maybe a half a cup of fresh parsley, a quarter cup of fresh basil, and I don't know, a quarter cup of Parmesan. And we're just gonna stir until it's all combined. Um, this is, I'm a mess right now. That's how you know he loves me. <laughs> okay, okay, this is looking good. I'm cool with this. I'm good with this. How's that looking over there, Senor Russ? Um, perfect. Do you turn the heat up just a smidge more? Turn the heat back up. Yep. We're gonna ch we're gonna change the view here. Some of the red wine, maybe about. I don't know, how much would you say that was? Too much. No, it wasn't. Not and enough. Then, yeah, I wouldn't say it wasn't enough. Just or enough. Just enough. So see how it's like absorbing? Like you want to deglaze the pan with it? We didn't have that many brown bits, but that is okay. So that's kind of absorbed. you smell that? It's going to make it a deep flavor. Fun fact, the recipe calls for um, white wine, but you know, we're a lot of crazy people here. <laughs> Why don't you play by the rules? Because I never play by the rules. And then we're going to do about three tablespoons of tomato paste. You always want to, that's probably too much, but that's good. You know, that's how we do when you put paste in something that's been sitting in a can, sitting in a tube, you kind of want to wake it up. Get a little zhuzhy zhuzh. How excited are you about doing this? Super. I can tell. It smells good though, right? Mm hmm And then water frantically boiling. Holy silly hell. And then I'm going to turn that down just a little. Just a little bit Um, diced tomatoes. I'm going to start with a half of a can. It goes for 14 ounces. This is 28. We'll start with that and see. See how it goes. Look at the mess I made. <laughs> you did. This is what I live with. And then, perfect. I'm gonna add four cups of water, which I should have prepared for. I didn't. Up there, look. Your camera work is gonna be like. So this is where, look, this is where if you have the four cups of chicken stock you wanna add it, you add it. Um, but like I said, we use the bouillon, so the four cups of that. And then about four teaspoons, give or take. One, two, three, four of that. Whoa. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> You're the best. It'll be fine. It'll taste delicious. Throw that in. The rest of our parsley going in. And the rest of the basil oil there. Um, this is going to come to a boil. Right? We're going to simmer it for 20 minutes. And then the only other thing we got to do is the lasagna noodles. We're going to break them up into bite sized pieces and boil them for a minute less. The, the package calls for it, and then we're just gonna put the noodles in the in the in the soup, and then let it simmer again for ten more minutes, and that's basically it. Tell my plan. Sure. Are you excited? <laughs> How would you say the ease of this was? It took kind of long. But it's all in one pot, pretty much, right? Yeah, it wasn't that so bad. Too bad. Uh, overall, it took, what, like 40 minutes? Sure. Not bad. So, we'll do the this. so kind of, like, see what I was saying, how it's, like, kind of thicker? Right? Ish? Mm-hmm. Right? That is hot, obviously. Two bowls of soup. I'll start with that. Good? Okay. And then, so, we talked about our little dumpling-y ricotta mixture. So, what you do, you kind of just make little balls like that, then? And just kind of dollop them around and that'll eventually like melt down into there which i'm okay with a little extra parmesan right doesn't hurt okay now i'm gonna taste it right. i'm gonna burn my face yeah it looks pretty hot it's gonna be so hot i'm excited but i'm gonna like it's good it's good i added some more salt and pepper at then What's up? Flip you around. Sorry, that's right. You just want to do it right there. Yep. All right. Bum, bum, bum. I think it looks good. Yeah. It tastes like it tastes like spaghetti slash lasagna soup. <laughs> you know what? Like it very easily looks like it could be also like you could do it like almost like nacho style. Like oh Mexican yeah. Style yeah, yeah. It. It's very hot, David. Don't hurry. I warned you. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Two thumbs up. One thumb up. Out of ten. What I mean, would you rate it? It's still soup and it's still lasagna. <laughs> I'll give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. Cool. Hope you like it. We're going to go eat this then. What are we watching? Uh, Hubby Halloween. Hubby yeah. Halloween. New Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. See, this is compromise. You cook with me. You said you wanted to watch it. <laughs> I do. I love you. Uh -huh. Okay, bye now. All right, guys. So that was it. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed these three cozy, heartwarming fall recipes. And can we just, like, God bless my husband. I just, like...
he's great. I know he doesn't want to do these, but he does it for me and it just makes me so happy. He's a, he's a good egg. So um, if you try any of these recipes, <laughs> let me know. Um, if you take, a, if you make them, tag me in them, send them to me. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you could, subscribe to my channel. And I am hoping we're going to do more of videos like this, like the cook with me and all that kind of stuff. I enjoy them so much and I hope you enjoy them too. Bye guys.